Hi, it's Fortune Buchholz with another video from NotFortuneSpool.com by request of my readers. So um, we were talking online very recently and some people asked me about the decks that I had by the famous Milanese publisher and artist Osvaldo Minigazzi. This subject came up because of Arnel Ando's famous Italian tarot tour, which she does every year, or just about every year, and she takes you all throughout Italy to see various sites that are associated with tarot history, tarot iconography, tarot symbology, tarot art history, and then she kind of culminates this entire visit with a wonderful, wonderful trip to Osvaldo Minigazzi's famous tarot store in Milan, Italy. And there she often has a party where you can meet many prominent Italian tarot artists. Uh, so, uh, you know, this happens in April of this year, April 2015. I think it normally happens sometime in April or in the early summer. And so if you ever have a chance to go on that tour, I highly recommend it. I myself, as many of you know, went to see Osvaldo myself recently, just last fall, when I was living in Bern, Switzerland. It's a very short train ride from Bern to Milan, so I just went down there for the afternoon where I had the opportunity to talk to Osvaldo in detail about cards. Osvaldo, as I think everyone knows, uh, has been a key, even giant figure in the world of cards since the early 70s. Certainly he's a key genius in the area of design and publishing. Uh, his website, which is run under the general imprimatur of Arnel Ando's sites, Arnel Ando Art, uh, features all of his uh, card history. This has got to be somewhere between 70 and 90 decks now. Of course, many of them are out of print. They're collector's items. They've been uh, shown in many museums, in many catalogs. Um, and so you should go if you have the chance. They, they're really uh, vital additions to anyone's collection and they really add a lot to your reading pleasure, to the pleasure of cards. They're just delightful. So I just wanted to take a moment uh, her request and show you a few of the cards that I owned and talk about a couple of the decks in some detail. Of course, one of my favorite uh, decks by Osvaldo is his Big Visconti. It's really huge. It's like a book, basically, in one of these beautiful handmade cases with his famous red wax seal in a slip case like a book with beautiful ribbons. So many of his decks are like this. I highly, highly love the Big Visconti with a plain red back. Then, of course, another very famous uh, smaller deck that he has is the unusually long Corte di Taroki. It's a beautiful deck, beautiful handmade box made by a friend of his who died. This is a beautiful reading deck, uh, sort of a naive uh, tapestry feel to this deck, medieval feel to this deck. I highly recommend this deck. Then, let me excuse me while I reach a copy of my beloved Minchiati. I think everyone knows that I'm one of the most prominent advocates of the Minchiati. Perhaps myself and La Fenu are the only people who may uh, commonly read with the Minchiati, use the Minchiati and talk about it a lot. Then of course the Vaquetta. This has been published in a mass market edition by Los Carabeo under the title Tarot of the Masters. The edition that I have is the hand colored edition by Osvaldo. I have actually two sets of this. This is from his 2001. And another deck that I have that I really love a lot, which is I think not very well known, is the Terra Neo Classico. This is from 2003, again in this beautiful handmade slipcase with the lovely ribbon and the red wax seal. Now, I love this deck a lot. This is actually one of my favorite decks. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about it and why I like like it so much. I think everyone should own actually all of these decks that I've just showed you. But I have a particular affection for these Gutenberg decks. Um, and so let's just talk about why I like the Tarot Neo Classico and Gutenberg decks in particular. Now I realize that some people who are new to art decks, who are new to historic decks and new to Italian decks, may not necessarily be familiar with the name Gutenberg. So let me just step back for a moment and explain a little bit about that. So the Gutenberg family is a very prominent family from southern Germany, from Bavaria, from Munich. At the time before Bavaria was part of an overall Germany, when Bavaria was its own kingdom, 
uh, von Guppenberg, the patriarch of that family, was actually the defense minister of Bavaria. And one of his sons, Fernando, leaves Munich and goes to Milan where he opens a card factory and he becomes a producer and designer of tarot other, and other card games and he publishes games. And his house, the Guppenberg house, lasts from about 1809 almost all the way to the end of the 19th century. So, uh, and you know, before it lasts a long time, most of the 19th century, and that's what you need to know. So the Tarot Neoclassico is a very interesting deck. It's one of the first decks that he publishes when he arrives in Milan. It has a number of interesting influences, which I think are worth talking about. I happen to have 85 of this edition here. I'm very pleased to have this particular edition. Now, uh, one of the things that's interesting about Guppenberg is that when he comes to Italy, he brings with him a number of the advances that the Germans have made technically in cards, particularly in terms of engraving and printing, right? And so the Germans, of course, were ahead in terms of uh, lithography and engraving ahead of the Italians and they had new techniques. He also brought design elements that were popular from Austria and he brought these into Italy where they had not been seen in cards for the first time. He also altered the cards and added new symbols and new ideas to them. For example, in the Neoclassico, which we see here, you can see it has a Spanish influence in the batons and it's kind of has some elements of um, artists from Madrid so that's very interesting because this almost looks more like a Spanish deck than an Italian deck, right? Uh, other interesting features that are unique to this particular deck you can see is in the judgment. You can see commonly judgment, right, has the angel calling happy people who are rising out of their, you know, open graves. This you can see has some perhaps less than happy people who are rising out of the flames. Very dramatic treatment of this common tarot subject. Another thing you can see that's different about this deck is the lover's card. This is very noteworthy. You can see that normally uh, this subject is one man choosing between two women while being menaced by Cupid. Here it's reversed. You see a woman choosing between two men while being menaced by Cupid. That's very interesting. It's an interesting twist on that card. Here on the ace, you can see the Guppenberg name. This is Guppenberg Factory, in Italian. Let's talk for a moment about the coins. The coins here in the small cards are very interesting, right? So uh, you see that while the cards are not illustrated in the Smith weight sense, right, they do have a number of these interesting design elements which uh, are highly noteworthy. And the cards are actual real Roman coins from the different Roman emperors. So that is a really, really nice and unique touch to this deck. Then you can also look at the arrangement of the small cards, which is highly unusual and kind of unique. So you have the normal two, right? Two cups above each other. You have this charming four in the usual pattern, right? It's two by two with a beautiful design in the middle. But look at the three. The three is a highly unique design. It's a little offset. Very, very, very interesting design. And here the five is sort of a normal four with one in the middle. So let me talk for a moment about the card stock of this particular deck. It's unlaminated beige archival card stock. You often see this uh, in Osvaldo's decks. This is unlaminated, though some of Osvaldo's decks do have a light lamination, but uh, this cardstock has a beautiful silky feel, very creamy feel. Mmm, delicious, delicious cardstock. And I love this, but the edges are very sharp. Obviously you don't want to cut yourself on these cards, and that's actually possible to do. So you can't really shuffle these cards vigorously. There's no riffling and cascading of these cards. Treat these cards very gently like the art objects that they are. So uh, I really love this deck. I love its uh, beautiful slip case. I love the unusual features of this deck. An interesting thing about this deck is you know that Stuart Kaplan, right, who we know best from US Games, uh, had this 
the original of this deck and original of this deck in his large collection and he sold it at Christie's in 2006 and it went for about $4,600. So this is really a very nice reproduction of a very valuable and important deck made by an important and artistic house, the Gutenberg House, and I highly recommend that everybody get this deck. It's a really great reading deck. It's fun. It's beautiful. It's extremely elegant and the overall Napoleonic feel of this deck is is highly unusual. So um, I like this. Uh, I like this deck a lot. Uh, the other deck that I wanted to take just another moment and talk about is my favorite, the Vaquetta. Again, I have two versions of this in these beautiful handmade boxes. So notice that both of these versions are slightly different size. One's a little larger than the other. You also notice how brightly colored the Vaquetta is. That's because it's been hand colored by Osvaldo himself, and the box is a beautiful handmade box. Let me show you the interior here of the uncolored cards wrapped around. This deck also comes with a, a little white book, so to speak, with a, an, a unique divination system and meaning of the cards in Italian. Very, very, very charming with a, a charming little system. Uh, three cards with a reduction, I guess a kind of esoteric reduction, using uh, the 22 trumps, so to speak. So this is really beautiful. Vaquetta is an interesting deck. Uh, I call it the Vaquetta after the designer. Uh, Giovanni Vaquetta was from Turin. Uh, in northern Italy from the Piedmont and he was actually a professor of illustration, a designer, a very sought-after designer and illustrator and much of his inspiration comes from architectural details in the Piedmont area. He wrote several books on these as I said before and he was also a professor at the Industrial Design School there. So one of the charms of this deck is that it, it features many of these ribbon decorations. Very unique very elegant. So even though this is not an illustrated set of small cards, again in the Smith White sense, they're very easy to read, they're very cheerful because of the bright colors, and they're so elegant due to these ribbon designs. Here we see the fool with his little cheetah. This is really charming. The faces on these cards are also happy. Beautiful, beautiful valet, right? So if you're one of those people who doesn't necessarily like uh, the TDM or the Tarot de Marseille style deck because you find the expressions to be dour, melancholy, overly intense, um, you are really going to love the cheerful expressions uh, of the Vicana. Look, Just look at the sun here featuring just really a beautiful and cheerful deck. So lovely. I highly recommend this deck. This is a good deck, uh, again, for people who are new to Tarot, for sitters who might be afraid of Tarot because it's so cheerful, so bright, and so inviting. This is the same unlaminated beige archival stock. Let me show you the back. This is the same back the Neoclassico has. This beautiful, delicate, geometric repeating design. I love this deck. I read with this deck probably almost more than any other deck. And again, I highly recommend it. That's why I have two copies of it. In fact, I, I'll probably end up buying more. <laughs> you may know this deck from its mass market version from Los Carabeo, Tarot of the Masters. If you can't get hold of Osvaldo's deck, it's good to get this deck by Los Carabeo. It's a really fascinating version. It's in the usual Los Carabeo uh, cardstock, lightly laminated, rounded corners, easy to shuffle with a delicate watercolor feel. Then the uh, other deck that I want to talk about very quickly is of course the Minchiati. Again, a beautiful, beautiful handmade box. Again, with the seal, this one has sort of a wooden interior for a wooden quality. This is the Etruria 1725. I could uh, do an entire video and probably someday will about the different versions of the Minchiati, which is of course an antique card game similar to Tarot uh, that died in the 1930s, but was at one time played widely 
uh, in Italy under a number of names from north to south, and there are a number of surviving ver uh, versions, uh, uh, sort of a, a crude, cruder woodcut version called the Florentine, and this one a very elegant um, engraved version called the Arturia. But anyway, so these are the cards that I have by Oswaldo. Of course, I have many more. I highly re recommend that everyone go to Arnell Ando Arts pages, take a look at all of the offerings by Oswaldo, uh, buy the cards that you can. Uh, he does sometimes uh, reprint his older ones that are more lovely. He has many charming cards on a wide variety of subjects, everything from historical cards to surrealistic cards to cards featuring insects. They're just amazing and beautiful in a wide variety of sizes, and I highly recommend that everyone start collecting the decks of Maestro Osvaldo. So until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this discussion, this little quick tour of Osvaldo's decks. As you can see, I just pulled out of my card collection here with open boxes all over the floor, so please forgive me for that. And um, of course, feel free to follow me at Not Fortune's Fool on Facebook, my personal page, Fortune Buchholz. View my pins on Pinterest at Not Fortune's Fool. And of course, you can always see me or book a reading with me at NotFortunesFool.com. So until then, have a great time and enjoy your cards.